Hello and welcome. Um, I hope that everybody is already in the room. Nobody left in the waiting room. Welcome to this webinar um, of the European Call Association Europa Cantat in the frame of the EPIC project. Um, we will hear more about the EPIC project a bit later, but I'm happy to say that this is our first public event in this project, so we are in a way launching it officially with this. Um, today, we have invited Josep um, Vila from um, Catalonia, Spain, to talk about how to audition for a national or international youth choir, or maybe also another choir, because um, we have known Josep for many years, and we know that he is very experienced in listening to a lot of auditions and making a selection for such a choir. And um, Josep was a conductor of the World Youth Choir last year in the 30th anniversary session in France and Portugal, and he has also conducted the World Youth Choir once before, and he has conducted the Catalan National Youth Choir, so he has a lot of experience with this. And we talked a little bit about the question, um, do all the young singers know how to prepare a good audition and um, how to prepare their material and do they know what the people in the jury or selection committee are actually looking at when they're making a choice and uh, Giuseppe said well um, there could be some improvement and so that was the start of the idea for this webinar so welcome again to everybody and we hope you will enjoy this webinar and I pass the word to my colleague Sophie Dauden Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. Sonia said this is our first um, uh, activity within the EPIC project. Um, and I am the project manager at the European Choral Association Europa Cantat, and uh, I am managing this project. Um, you will see on this slide uh, that the main focus of the project is the professionalization and the internationalization of the careers of young musicians and particularly singers. Um, so we're looking to improve the training that is uh, available out there um, to create uh, new kinds of, of trainings um, and also to raise awareness of the possibilities that are out there for young singers, um, particularly the Euro Choir and the World Youth Choir. And so these are um, uh, other opportunities and hopefully this uh, webinar today will uh, help you in putting together an application for one of these choirs. Um, we're looking also to prove the value of participation in auditions youth choirs, particularly at national, European and international level. And uh, as part of this, we are doing a data collection and so there was a survey um, that we are sending out there uh, uh, shortly in a few months um, just to try to hear from you about your career development um, if you have participated in this kind of choir. So look out for that. Then um, a few of the more practical things. Uh, firstly, we are recording this. Um, you as a webinar participant uh, cannot be seen and your name is not listed there. However, we might ask you later if you would like to share your experiences um, with auditioning or in uh, the World Youth Choir or Euro Choir or this kind of thing. Um, for that, we can uh, share your video and ask you to come up as a, a panelist virtually. And so if you um, do want to talk about your experience later, please be aware that it will be recorded and you will be in the recording. Next, um, there uh, will be, of course, our presentation um, by uh, Josep and uh, there will be a possibility to ask questions. Uh, you will see, if you are watching this through Zoom, that uh, there is a Q&A uh, at the bottom. Um, this is different to the chat, and you can write your question in there, and Joseph will um, come back to answer those at the end. If you see a question in there that you think you um, really want to hear answered, then you can vote it up. So it is more likely uh, to be answered uh, first. Um, you also have a possibility to send a message to all of the participants uh, using the chat here. If you want to say hello, introduce yourself. Um, but you have to make sure that you have clicked 
all panelists and attendees um, to make sure that you're speaking to everyone and not just to us. <laughs> um, so if you uh, have problems with your internet connection, it can help if you close other programs um, and that will hopefully give you the best experience possible in this webinar. And so there I will stop sharing. And I will hand over to Joseph to um, carry on the webinar. Hello, good morning, everyone. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Josep Vila Casañas, and I'm from Catalonia in Spain. I'm a conductor and a composer. I'm a teacher as well at the ISMUC, which is the University for Music in Barcelona, where I lead the choral conducting class. I conduct the Leader Camera Chamber Choir in Sabadell, my hometown, and as conductor, I work mostly now as a freelance. I'm the former main conductor of many choirs in Spain, such as the Television Choir in Madrid, the Cor de Cambra del Palau de la Musica Catalana, and the Orfeo Catalá. And now, um, That's it. Okay. Um, just checking technical things. Yes. So, my experience with youth choirs is not very big, but very intense and happens to be one of the most touching chapters of my career. I've worked with the Catran National Youth Choir in many occasions, and I conducted the World Youth Choir in the sessions 2010 in Spain and 2019 in France and Portugal. That's why the European Choral Association Europa Cantat asked me some months ago about offering a webinar. Giuseppe, could you tell the young singers something about how to audition for a national or an international youth choir? And I said yes, with pleasure, since I have a large experience in selection processes of choral singers, both young and adult, amateur and professional. When it comes to national youth choirs, I must say that is not that different nowadays from auditioning for an adult or a professional ensemble. What can be different, of course, is the level of rigorousness and the ideal of sonority, among other aspects. We'll speak about that later on. We will start now focusing on your training and the way you should face the audition. Indeed, the best help for preparing an audition is the one you'll get from your musical educators, principally from your voice teachers and those who teach you solfeggio or sight singing. What I can offer you as a compliment is the point of view of the evaluator, of the conductor who has the aim to build up the best possible choir, selecting the most suitable singers among those who apply for joining the ensemble. From this perspective, I'll try to give you some advices and to expose some criteria which can lead a musical committee to a final decision. I apologize in advice is if some aspects sound too obvious to you or have a lot to do with the common sense, which by the way, is the less common of the senses sometimes. Since the auditorium we have today is large enough, I take for granted that your degree of expertise can vary a lot. So please just take any idea or advice 
which can help you on the future. First of all, I'd like to enumerate the most common parts or exercises that the senior has to face in an audition. You'll be very probably asked to sing at the beginning a piece of your own choice for solo voice and piano. Then will come an obligatory piece for solo voice as well with piano or a cappella. Then a choral work or some extracts of it selected by the jury. You are, of course, supposed to have prepared it at home with the maximal accuracy. Then a vocalization will allow you to show the range of your voice. And finally, an exercise of sight singing will be given to you in order to evaluate your musical preparation. As a complement of it all, you may be integrated in the end in a vocal ensemble. That's the moment for the jury to observe how you manage as a member of it. How to select the free chosen piece? The piece we choose should show the best of us, not only as singers, but as musicians. It should suit perfectly well to our optimal range and to the characteristics and possibilities of our voice presently. We should be able to sing the piece by heart and with the maximal comfort and enjoyment. Be sure that for the jury, how you sing will always prevail over what you sing. Then avoid too demanding areas and never put yourself on the limits. Show us the best of your musical taste and the optimal colors of your voice. The literary language of the piece we choose can be determinant too. It should be one of those languages we control perfectly well, phonetically, and should allow the most beautiful colors of our voice to be appreciated. In that sense, it's important that if you are not, you get familiar as soon as possible with the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet, and the corresponding symbols of the languages you know. Its use is getting more and more normal in the rehearsals of the national and the international youth choirs. In case we don't go to the audition with our own pianist, it will be important before starting your performance that you give the pianist very clear instructions concerning tempo, possible phrasing inflections, and important breathing points. It will help having trained yourselves explaining that in order to be able to transmit this information briefly and with precision. As far as the obligatory piece for solo voice is concerned, you will proceed equally. The new thing now is that the accuracy and respect you show for what is indicated in the score will, even more, will be even more important since the jury has selected the piece for some specific reasons. Making sure that we use the addition indicated by the organizers will avoid unnecessary trouble. When it comes to the obligatory choral work, you should take in consideration all that's been told so far, but think that very probably that will be the part of the audition that the conductor of the choir will appreciate the more. Be prepared to sing it a cappella 
if you are asked to, getting the pitch from your own tuning fork and be prepared as well to sing it while the piano plays all the voices except yours. As far as the vocalization is concerned, just a couple of remarks. Decide and train a good way of showing your vocal range using the most comfortable vowels or combination of syllables. Your voice should sound again free, well-focused and with good timbre. And of course, avoid going beyond your limits where the sound will lose its quality. Only if some member of the jury asks you to go further, follow her or his requirements. When we sing as a member of a vocal ensemble, in a duet, a trio, a quartet, we must demonstrate our tonal autonomy, as well as our capacity for listening while singing and interacting with the other members of the group. This capacity of listening will be reflected, for instance, in the way you adjust intonation or intensity, in the way you modulate the color of the vowels in order to get a better blending, and even in the way you respond to others, to others phrasing ideas, or the way you drive some musical initiatives. Very probably, after offering these last performances, you will be asked to repeat them after receiving some corrections or suggestions from the jury, both vocal, phonetic, technical, or concerning interpretation. Your capacity for reacting and adapting to these ideas may be more decisive than what's been done before. Don't take the comments of the jury as a symptom of having done something wrong, but as an opportunity to show your tools and resources to adapt to different situations and to respond to different conductors' demands. Let's talk now about the sight singing exercise. First of all, make sure of having understood the instructions given and follow them carefully. You may be asked to sing with lyrics when they are, or using a phoneme or the name of the notes. In case you are allowed to make your own decision, choose the way that allows you to show the best as a musician. Of course, intonation and rhythm comes first, but I can assure you this, sight singing musically and respectfully with the dynamics is very important because then, if you do so, the sporadic intonation or rhythmical mistakes will be less relevant for the jury. I'll show you now the sight singing exercise proposed by the World Youth Choir on the edition 2019. First of all, we'll have a look at the instructions they gave. As you can see, there was no possibility to sing a single note before starting. The candidates were only allowed to analyze the melody and to use their inner hearing. I must say that's quite exceptional. Mostly of the times you will get a room without piano, of course, and you will have the possibility to train by singing. Let's have a look now at the score.
This is a version for alto and offers the possibility to sing in bar seven as alto one or alto two. That's quite usual in the sight singing exercises. Observe that the tempo indicated makes it quite easy going. While sight singing is also important respecting the tempo indications. In case that the piece is too fast for you, it will be preferable that you sing the whole melody in a slightly slower tempo than slowing down only when needed. Your inner rhythmic regularity and stability is something to be shown as well. And before starting the sight singing exercise, if you don't have absolute pitch, you may use again the tuning fork unless the pianist gives you kindly the first note or the tonality main chords. You must be prepared for every imaginable situation. That's something that juries take very much in consideration beyond strictly musical and technical aspects. Let's suppose that you did the audition successfully and you have been selected to participate in the session. Then something new starts, the real thing, and you realize that the biggest challenge comes now. They expect the best of you as a singer and as a human being. All of them do, the organizers, the conductor, of course, and the singers around you. From now on, the more you offer, the more you get. The experience can be something unforgettable. And after a while, you start thinking about applying again for being there in the next session. Making it possible will be 80% up to you. That's what we call the audition after the audition. For me, that's the most important one and has lots in common with professional real life. Every aspect we have been dealing with before will be evaluated again during the session. What you do and what you offer in every rehearsal and concert will count. In the World Youth Choir, to give you a real example, the leadership of the conductor is completed with four section leaders. They are former singers with lots of experience and they are responsible for the warming up and for the sectional rehearsals. They take care as well of the social life and the atmosphere in the group and they are of course in permanent contact with the conductor. But at the end of the session, they are asked to write a report of every singer and this report will, will be put on the table of the next year's jury in order to inform about the singers that apply again. This report will tell us, for instance, whether the singers came to the session with the repertoire properly prepared or not. It will tell us whether they were punctual and if they accomplished properly all their compromises during the session. It will tell us whether they kept the concentration and behaved with good discipline in the rehearsals. It will tell us whether they adapted well to the group and how they collaborate in creating a nice and a positive human atmosphere around them. It will, tell us that it will tell us whether they did respect and support their choir mates in the difficult moments. And we come now to the most delicate and often the most difficult point, whether the singers were capable to keep their voices safe and fresh until the last concert. 
Of course, the work of the conductor and the schedule of the session are definitely relevant on that point. But taking care of your own voice is mostly your responsibility, my dear singers. You should learn how to combine the commitment a singer with enjoyment of the social life. Again, your singing teachers who know your, your voice better than nobody else will give you the most clever recommendations. So far, we have been considering the hypothesis that everything went as it was expected. But what if not? Of course, that can happen too. You made an audition, you are more or less satisfied with what you did, but you haven't been selected. It's the moment to find out why. When the reasons are principally musical or technical, it's important that you get something from this experience. Sometimes the juries offer the possibility to get a short report or some advices after the audition. Ask always for it. That can be very useful to go on with your education as singers. Sometimes the reason has to do only with logistics. There are no seats enough for all these excellent sopranos, altos, tenors and basses that apply for a position in the choir. Then your name will enter very probably in the so-called waiting list, just in case some other singers cannot finally join the choir. The territorial balance is something that juries sometimes take in consideration as well in the final selection of the singers. Despite the fact that the quality of the singers comes first, both national and international youth choirs always try to involve singers representing the maximal number of geographical areas. This diversity is a very important, is a fundamental of the project. It happens as well that very good singers, having made a gorgeous audition, are not selected because their voices don't suit with the type of sound the conductor wants to build up or are not as much experienced as other candidates in singing properly a cappella or in specific music styles. So is life. Ductility, adaptability are very important for developing a career as a choral singer. Every conductor has her or his own tastes. Every ensemble has its ideals and characteristics. And if you want to sing with them, you have to be very flexible. Curiously, those who are exclu exclusively solo singers and have success can keep and develop more easily their own personalities. And that brings me to one of the principal differences between selecting a singer for youth choir and for a professional choir. In a professional ensemble, everyone is supposed to have developed her, her or his capacities to the maximum. In a youth choir, however, a combination of voices in different stages of their process of education can function perfectly well together if we choose the proper repertoire for them. When I was preparing the 2019 World Youth Choir session, I had a previous idea about the repertoire I wanted to present, but only after having made the auditions, I made a final decision because then I knew the real potential of the ensemble I was going to work with.
I'll expose now some final considerations and uh, advices. In a face-to-face -face audition, if you have any doubts concerning the procedure, don't hesitate asking the staff before starting. It's very important that you have everything clear. Then you just take a deep breath and go on naturally. Still, in a very practical level, I recommend coming always to an audition with some printed copies of the pieces you are going to perform, just in case the jury or the pianist ask for them. You would be surprised by how many uncomfortable situations can be provoked for either the candidates or the organizers not having taken good care of this basic stuff. The loser will be always you, because having to improvise a solution, you will get more stressed than necessary. In case you have some incidents to expose, let's say you have been sick for a while and you are not yet in your best shape, or you didn't receive the obligatory pieces beforehand or whatever, please expose it to the staff before entering the jury room. They will inform the evaluator committee and they will decide how to proceed. It's important that you help things develop normally. Then you will allow, you will allow the jury free for from any distraction to appreciate fully your musical potential. Beyond the musical aspects, try to cause the best impression while dealing with the organizers and the jury. Be more than punctual and make clear that you are well prepared and that you have the greatest interest in joining the choir. Never forget the importance of knowing how to behave. A singer is, above all, an artist that communicates. During the audition, try to be yourself. When you enter the room, you should greet everyone, including the pianist, if there is one, and the audience, if that's the case. Don't avoid making eye contact when someone addresses you to ask you something or to give you instructions. And that will sound funny, but in case you know personally some member of the jury, don't make it too visible, just in case. Avoid telling the jury that you are nervous. They know perfectly well that you are under pressure and they will try to calm you down and even to make you feel at home if you need it. Precisely, observing how the candidates manage with that pressure is part of it all. When you make an audition sending a recording, there's nothing new to be told, except for the quality of the recordings. You would be surprised that still, with all these technical facilities we have nowadays, some terrible recordings are sent and don't allow anyone to make a decent evaluation. Look for help when you need it. And please, don't forget that you can learn something from every audition you do. You will learn from the experience itself. You will learn from the evaluators, from the audience, from the pianists from your competitors and, above all, from your own reaction and your resulting evolution. That's it. Now we'll have a short interludio and after that I'll answer your questions. And I'll be delighted if any of you wants to share with us some interesting experience related to the fascinating 
auditional, auditioning world. So that's what will we offer you now. This is a part of the concert that the World Youth Choir gave in Portugal. That was the celebration of the 30th anniversary of this magnificent project. This is one of the pieces we performed, composed by me, and I was really happy with the quality of the result because the, the choir was really gorgeous, as you may appreciate. And here you have just, you will get these PDFs later on, but you will find here the link in the YouTube just to go to this recording. So now I try to share it with you.
friends now it's time for questions okay yeah i don't know if everyone sees the can see the questions um but there's a first one it says there are some people who are not too used to sang solo or even recording their own voice but are very comfortable as a choir singer and very skillful good listening and so on uh yeah of course uh i've been telling you about the most helitistic situation but every situation is different and of course, very often comes to us that uh, there, there, we can see lots of potential, further more than being a solo singer. That's why this uh, audition, including uh, a rehearsal in a small group or even in a small choir, it's so important because there's a balance. Some people is very good singing as a soloist, but doesn't manage to good in this group. And then the opposite. And some voice individually, you cannot appreciate a special richness, let's say. But suddenly it's a, a big potential in the group to, uh, to blend with the others and, and even to enrich the sound. Why not? So my answer would be definitely yes. I think the, more, the, the normal juries take that in consideration in the youth choir especially. Then, greetings from Indonesia. What kind of repertoire requirement for the solo singing part? Is the song list, uh, yeah, I don't know the song list, but um, I think a good orientation as a complement would be that you find out what's the repertoire that this choir uses to do. Uh, let's say, do they sing oratorios? Do they sing a cappella? Do they sing uh, uh, Beethoven Ninth? Uh, I don't know. And then uh, your singing teachers or your uh, friends and advisors can recommend the pieces closer to these repertoires. For example, I imagine you are joining a choir to sing Beethoven Ninth. Maybe singing an aria from Mozart would be okay because Beethoven Ninth requires a special skill vocally. Otherwise, you, your voice would be destroyed. I'm afraid I don't know this song list, A, B, R, S, M. Okay, let's go on. And can we just send the recording material for World Youth Choir directly to the committee? Yeah, this is more a organization question rather than via our national representative. I'm afraid not, because one of the functions of this functions of these national representatives is already making a pre-selection because uh, I think there's a limit, I'm not sure now, maybe it's 10 maximal candidates for, for a country. 
imagine that 50 people apply for that from Indonesia, from Spain, from Brazil. Uh, it, it would be impossible to evaluate all this quantity. Uh, think that in the last session, we had to choose uh, among almost 200, 200 singers. And that was a not difficult work because in that session, the level was incredibly high. But uh, of course, more than that would be exhausting and impossible to keep the concentration in the jury. So I'm wondering what would be the main and most important differences in criteria one selecting singers for a project choir in comparison to a stable choir? That's a good question. Let me think. I think what it's definitely different uh, is not being a project choir or a stable choir. What makes a difference uh, is what kind of schedule has this choir. Because a project choir, of course, it's, it's normally a choir that starts uh, in a moment, they have a short period and they make the concerts. So everyone is supposed to prepare in advance. Some uh, stable choirs do the same, but some others not. So I would say in some kind of stable choir, uh, if I have plenty of time to read the music and to even to help the singers to learn the music, I wouldn't uh, demand the same requirements, uh, for example, concerning the, the side senior at, at your size, yeah? So the different would be related mostly to the, the, the way of functioning of this choir. Okay, then, hello Gert, nice to read you. Gert, uh, he was my tenor uh, section leader last year and he did great. I'm a conductor and I'm a country in my country, South Africa. Most of my auditions consist of evaluating experienced singers. How will you go about the process when your singers are not as advanced as you would like them to be? For example, most of my singers in my youth choir comes from schools with no music program, yet they have a good singing voice with great timbre and resonance, but they have no knowledge in music. Uh, indeed, I imagine in this situation, you have different ways of working with different singers, depending on their background. Maybe you spend more time with some singers than with the others, and then you put together to go on uh, in this final process of the preparation. I would say, when we audition someone, we should put uh, the singer, the potential singer, in the situation, the, the most similar situation possible that he or she will experience in the choir. Then you can see how he react or how she react. A very good side reader. And I say, OK, you can start with me in the rehearsal number three. The one who has not knowledge and background, I would say, OK, Let's spend 20 minutes in learning that, that piece. Then I realize it has good ear. Is he or she uh, quick by learning, has facility for that. But I insist the audition has to be always something, a very similar situation to the real situation they will find and experience later on in the choir. Okay, I'm always wondering why conductors don't give a clear picture of what kind of voice they would like to have in their choir. <laughs> so why not telling straight something like, I'm not interested in just colored voice. Okay, I think you're absolutely right. When the big difference, uh, when there's a big difference, if we are a pop choir, uh, jazz color voices, chest voice singing mostly. This is a big difference and you have to be clear. Excuse me, I'm trying to perform uh, Bach motets or I'm trying to perform single swingers music arrangements or uh, whatever, jazz or a uh, Negro spiritual, whatever. You have to be very clear on that. But from a certain point, 
um, I've been asked many times, but could you tell me, please, what kind of voice do you want for the Bach motets? And I, I, and I cannot answer precisely, very, very accurate. Uh, then I have to hear to that voice, to ask that voice to be flexible, to show me different ways of uh, producing the sound, phrasing, etc. And then I can make a decision. But this idea of the sound, I don't believe it's always done on the conductor's head. As well, the ideal of the sound of the whole choir. When we have an ideal, we have always to make a compromise between the choir we have and the ideal we have, and then we go to the final result. But I cannot, I cannot, we shouldn't force the voices to sound in a specific way. If it's not, if that way it's not their natural way, then it's, and it comes quite often, and especially with young singers, we can destroy voices because asking the voices doing things they cannot do. There, uh, more questions. Hello, Giuseppe. Thank you for the webinar. In a live, live audition, and maybe also in a recording, is there an obligation to present oneself or the piece one is to perform? If yes, who should this be done and what information should be presented? Yeah. Um, as I said in certain moment, uh, this is a part of the proceda. And this question should be asked to the organizers before entering the jury room. Uh, if they say yes, you have to introduce yourself and the piece. I think uh, the most important thing to say is your name, your background. If you are studying at the moment, what are you studying and where? And then, of course, concerning the piece, the composer, and uh, if it's part of an oratorio or a cantata or an opera, or it's a part of a, a, a leader a leader collection. Hi, can being a young choral conductor be a reason to select someone in audition? Indeed, uh, that can be a plus, of course. Uh, when you are looking for very efficient singers, efficient singers, if someone sings very good and you see that uh, he or she is a conductor or he's training his conducting or has some experience, that could help uh, when you make a final decision because you may need for some specific moment, maybe some help, some collaborators in the choir, why not? Okay. Uh, how can I prepare for sight singing? Yeah, that's the big question. And I think that's the most difficult one thing to educate. Uh, I believe deeply in two things. Um, first of all, the most you sing, the most you practice in front of score, and the most you, you do rehearsals, the most you learn sight, sight singing. But then there are, of course, specific methods to train yourself for a certain point and to be independent about melodies, intonation, about rhythm, and so on. Uh, the methods are there's many, many of them, but I will confess which is my uh, favorite. Um, and my favorite is a couple of books by Lars Edlund. Lars Edlund was a magnificent pedagogue from Sweden, a collaborator during many years of Erik Eriksson in the Music High School in Stockholm. And uh, at that moment, the, they decided that the singers should, uh, should be educated with the same uh, exigence as uh, conductors and as composers. Then the ear training was a principle on this subject. And as a result of this experience as teacher, Lars Enlut published two books. The name of these two books is Modus Vetus, which refers everything we already know, and it's concentrated about training yourself to read a tonal music, tonal. And then to go further and to be able to read easily the atonal uh, music 
uh, abstract with no tonality is the second book called Modus Novus, which is for the new music. So maybe I can write it down later on if you need it, but it's Lars Edlund is the, the author and the books are Modus Vetus and Modus Novus. Yeah. Then how to deal with mistakes during auditions. Okay, the less important to give to a mistake, the less important the jury will give to this mistake. And as I said you, the more you show yourself as a musician, all the importance of small mistakes will just decline. Yeah. Then, uh, now, thank you, Giuseppe, for the amount of information and advices. You are very welcome. Do you have any recommendations for the singers who prepare themselves without help from vocal teachers? Wow. That's a difficult question. I'm really sorry. But um, uh, that's been a, a recent evolution in the choral world. Uh, when I was a young man, uh, it was almost completely two different worlds. The choral world was one world and the world of the people studying singing was a separated world. I'm happy to say that more and more this evolution brought these two uh, worlds together. And now it's very normal and it's almost always expected in a national youth choir that when you approach and you try, you have been trained uh, minimally. Some people has a beautiful voice only for being well trained inside of a choir. Some others do because they have been taking private lessons. Uh, there's no an only situation. There are many, many possibilities. But when you're preparing yourself, well, I would say you, you can always find someone around you that can, can give you minimum minimum advices and orientations. Yeah, sorry, I, I don't have more clever ideas about that. Now, the theme of today is choral singers, but still, what is the path of a conductor in this context? The path of a conductor in this context. So please, could you be more precise in this? I am afraid I don't get the, the heart of, of your question. So meanwhile, I go to the following. How common is for singers to audition as a canto tenor? Uh, this is more and more common and uh, uh, and normal. And the uh, canto tenor is nowadays a, a perfect alternative to an alto voice. Of course, the more we are close to the early music performances, the more the conductors prefer to work with this color because it's more genuine. But in the normal repertoires, it makes no difference. And uh, finally, the decision comes through the, the, the quality of the sound and the quality of the, of the musician. So from the point of view of the selection committee, would you find useful to address the musical qualities of the candidates by adding to the audition a near training exercise? What specific skills would you put the focus on? Yeah, I must say I've, I've done that uh, in many occasions, never in the audition for a national youth choir, but for a uh, Many years ago, for my, my normal choirs, uh, a part of the audition was uh, after doing everything and said reading and so on. Uh, okay, let's play a little bit. Sing me that chord, sing me that melody, improvise something. Do you recognize that? Um, whatever. And then uh, that was very useful, especially with singers that were interested in going on uh, with their musical education. Uh, I made this compromise with my singers very often. Okay, you are very welcome. You will be part of our choirs. But meanwhile, uh, your commitment includes you 
uh, going on with your musical education. And then after doing a test, uh, like you suggest, Alberto, then I could be more precise about recommending each singer which type of um, training they need. And uh, many times I've been even in contact with their professor, with their educators, in order to orientate uh, their uh, education in the best way possible to, to get the best results in the choirs. Then, Hi, Giuseppe, thank you so much for your presentation. My question, if the sound color of the singer who audition is different from the program that you had been made, did you change the concert program and make it fit into the color of the voices? Of course, uh, it came not that often, but sometimes I had an idea, a project, and then uh, people applied, and I realized that the potential of this group would be better focused in another program than the first idea. And that was a gorgeous experience. What else? Hello from Poland. However, the World Youth Choir seeks singers from a background or basic or semi-professional music education. Does this mean that the choir conducting university students or popular conservative cannot apply? Of course they can. And many of my colleagues, conductors, have been members of the choir. And in the last session, I can assure you that uh, there were lots of young conductors and people studying conducting in the choir. And that uh, opened the door to, to have very interesting uh, uh, meetings, just sharing our experiences. But I must say, I think it's important every choral conductor takes good care of his, own, his or her own voice. And the more you train your voice, you don't need to be a super singer. But the more you train your voice, the more, the more you learn about this beautiful and mysterious instrument, the more you will be able to help and to develop the talent of your choirs. And the, the risk of making damage to your singers without wanting it will be lower. So I would change the, the question and instead your question I would say, should I develop a little bit as a singer in order to be a better conductor and then being admitted in the World Youth Choir? And I would say, yes. Hello from Guatemala. Giuseppe, if a singer shows potential and has developed mechanisms to learn repertoire with little to no straight head abilities, how likely is that they will be considered for high level choir? Yeah, again, sight singing is part of it, but it's not the only way to uh, be uh, efficient in a choir. An alternative as a sight singing um, exercise I've been using very often for my regular choirs, it's okay, thank you very much. Uh, I like your voice. This is a score for you. Come in 24 hours and sing it for me perfectly. And then I know how this singer manages to, to reach the goal. And uh, if she or he manages well and comes back and the, the, the music is there in her or his head, I, I take her or him because it doesn't matter. I, I don't care about someone being able to sing on the minute one on being able to sing on the minute two or after being having been preparing the piece at home. Yeah, how to build a career as conductor? What was your experience and the role of World Youth Choir in it? What are the opportunities for young conductors today? Well, I think, uh, and now I, I think this is the time for another webinar. Yeah, this is a long thing to discuss about, but I must say that today, if I compare with the landscape when I was a young man, it's much, much better and much rich than it was since many high schools offer high quality 
uh, high quality classes about color conducting, many of the, the, the choral federations offer high quality uh, normal classes and conducting and master classes. Then when you have already a, a level, you have more and more opportunities to go uh, uh, to the, the conductors' competitions and that it's a chance to, to show your potential and, and to get your first engagements in the professional world. I think whenever you get in touch with your first uh, choral conducting professor, he or she will indicate you the, indicate you the, the path to go on, to go ahead. Okay. I see that all the questions were answered. Am I right, Sophie? You're uh, right. That was a lot of questions. That, oh, Sonia, would you like to add something? Yeah, I just wanted to say that Luca Zink wrote, will my question from email be answered? I don't know to which email Luca sent it. Lucas, can you just ask the question here? I will check if I find an email. Um, Esther apparently has it and will okay. bring it now. Thanks. In the chat. So just one more question, Giuseppe. We just wait for Luca's question. Sure. And um, uh, there it comes. Can you see the chat? Yeah. It's actually two questions. Ah, the chat. No, no the questions. No. Oh, in the chat. The chat. Okay. Maybe he had a problem to access the questions and answers. Yeah. Is the last one? Yes. <laughs> My first question, are there any programs for artists who don't have the assets to travel to the locations of certain choirs or can afford to stay there and pay for things like food or stuff, especially in the choir is in another country, it would be hard to pay. Yeah, okay. And the second, what's ideal? Start for a 18 years old singer like me to start his career. First small gifts and slowly advancing to bigger projects or the to go to an international choir. Yeah, maybe the first question, I don't know if you agree, Zonia, is mostly uh, concerning the staff and the, the structure of the choirs and if their experiences around the world. Maybe you can ask uh, answer that later. Concerning the, the second one, what's the ideal start for 18 years old, start his career. Okay, first step, go as soon as you can to the best uh, singing teacher you can afford. That's the best. Uh, after that, follow all the opportunities and as soon as you can apply for a choir, uh, it's important that the choir when you are studying singing has a good conductor with good knowledge about the voices, a conductor who has the capacity to get to, to take good care of your voice and to orientate in your evolution as the professor singing professor does and then when you are ready they will tell you go to the your your choir go to the national choir in your country go to the world youth choir but as soon as you start the best and even as we said before every audition is something it's an occasion to learn something don't wait too long. And if there are three, four occasions you are too young or too inexperienced, never mind. The experience itself of the audition will help you to be the first one when it comes the moment. Yes, thank you. I might answer the other question. So I think um, there are many differences between the choirs. Um, and uh, normally, yes, there are possibilities, but they are different in every country. I can say, to take an example of the World Youth Choir, I think the fantastic thing about the World Youth Choir is that once you are there, everything is free. So you only need to pay the trip. And for the auditions, um, they are organized nationally, so you don't actually have to travel to another country to do the audition. And also, um, in big countries, um, either there are several places where you can do auditions, or you can also do um, a, a digital audition. Um, so there, there are usually ways um, to help you avoid having to pay a lot of money to um, get to another place um, for an audition. But then, of course, it depends on the choirs how much you will have to contribute for the session itself. 
the national youth choirs in different countries have different systems there. Sometimes you have to contribute, sometimes you don't. Um, but then there are also sometimes funds that can help you. Um, sometimes the choral organizations in the country um, will actually help the singers from the country who are uh, trying to join an international choir. So please, if you are um, uh, aware of which choral organization exists in your country, why don't you ask them if they have any possibility to help. And we as European Choral Association, we have a fund mostly for singers from Central Eastern European countries or other countries with a difficult economic situation where they can apply for a scholarship of the Noel Minet Fund for some projects as well. So there are possibilities. And Joseph, there is one more question in the question and answers that maybe I can take as yes. well, because I yes. think it's more addressed to us as organizers. Exactly. Um, it's a very interesting one because, of course, yes. we have been uh, uh, discussing with the hypothesis of a normal world with no COVID, with no pandemic. Yes. And uh, Gert is, is going to the point. Uh, before answering, I must tell you that uh, in our music high school, in our conservatory in Barcelona, in ESMUC, we've been sharing at the end of the session all our experiences about how did we keep teaching through the Inter through the internet and it was surprising listen to the singing teachers uh, telling us about some platforms not zoom but i have here a couple of names yam kazam and yamulus uh, which are really uh, efficient even to do music together and some of my uh, colleagues singing teachers told me joseph it was incredible i could do my my lessons the student was singing, even I could play the piano at home, and the quality of the sound was very high, and the delay of the sound was almost nothing. So just, I would recommend Gert to investigate these platforms, because uh, given the situation, lots of technicians are trying to develop these, uh, these platforms in order to, uh, to get the maximal efficiency, even for musicians that cannot join for a while and, and work together. Yes, I just posted something in the chat that actually there is a new platform being developed at the moment and soon to be launched that should be even better and especially allow bigger groups and people with less technical knowledge to also be able to sing together online because one of the downsides of Jamkazam and Jamalus is that you need to be quite skilled in technical things to be able to use it. at least one person in the group has to be very good in technical um, skills and you and the number of people that can join is reduced so it's difficult to get a choir together. Um, uh, the other question is um, I think at the moment on a national level so if we speak about national youth choirs many are actually doing live auditions because an audition is not a communal singing um, but there's one person singing in a room so you can have um, bigger um, um, bigger distances without major problems. So I know, for example, the German National Youth Choir will be recruiting live in the coming month. It depends a bit on the situation in the country you're in. I think for the international um, auditions for the World Youth Choir, actually, we won't, um, we probably won't do real auditions because since we had to cancel the 2020 session, we will probably re-invite the people who were selected for 2020 or at least work with the, with the audition material we already have. Um, but I think um, since technical possibilities for making a recording today are also better and the World Youth Choir has always offered the possibility to do a purely digital audition if you are in a country where there are no national recruitments, I think that the auditioning is not the problem. I think our much bigger problem is um, how to actually run our national youth choirs and our youth choir on projects in COVID-19 times, because there, if you have a choir of 50 or even 90 people, it's much more difficult to, um, to actually keep um, the distances and keep to the rules that exist. So that, that's something we have to hope for. And um, again, it's quite different from country to country. The Norwegians are singing already since end of April in um, almost normal circumstances with one meter to one meter 50 distance and in some countries singing is still banned so you have everything um and joseph another question came up from my yes, exactly <laughs> that's nice stubborn <laughs> i like this word 
Yeah, of course. It's very important when you knew when you know very good singers uh, to be sure that they have real interest in singing because many times people are very good but they are okay with their own choir and their own activity and maybe you you are more ambitious for him for him or for her that they are and you have to respect that but meanwhile when you are trying to convince them you should clearly explain what these experiences can mean for them and nowadays in the internet are many nice uh uh what's the word for it um uh, reportages reports or uh telling us about this experience and recently we did one for the jeunesse musical international and some of the former singers of the world youth choir were telling us about what this experience meant to them and it's extremely touching to to see at their faces when they do that and to listen to every experience that really changed their lives forever. But at the end, the decision has to be made by, the, by every singer itself. Great, well, I think at that point we uh, have reached the end of the questions. I'm absolutely delighted that we had so many and this was clearly um, a topic that was aching to be discussed. Thank you so much, Joseph, for uh, agreeing to do this. And uh, I think it's been a, a really good discussion. Um, My pleasure. I thank, you, I thank you too for the, for the invitation. Our pleasure. <laughs> Um, and I, I'm now going to pass over to Estera. Um, so if uh, you enjoyed this, then perhaps you want to stay in touch and Estera will tell you how. Perfect, thank you. So I just need... Mm -hmm. So if you like the webinar today, you're probably gonna like what we're gonna prepare, be preparing in the future. So let's stay in touch. You have all our channels um, on the screen right now. Uh, also on YouTube, you will find the playlist with the previous webinars that we've been doing and tomorrow you'll find this one. So in case you want to share it, you'll have it there. And if you want to stay updated um, on the activities and initiatives of the European and International Choral World, you can subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, you can do it also on the website. That's the, the latest edition is now uh, live. I'm putting it in the chat for you to have. Besides all the choral activities, we sum up each month also the most relevant initiatives that are being taken across the cultural sector as well. And you'll find that uh, there, of course. And if you have any questions, just remember that um, we're one email away. You have the website right there. And yeah, looking forward to stay in touch and see you. And uh, yeah, giving the final words back to Sonia. Thank you very much. So. Um... Thank you very much to Zeb and thank you very much for the people who were following um, this webinar and asking so many questions. Um, I have been um, on committees um, responsible for the World Youth Choir and other such choirs um, for many years. And I think it's a, it's a crucial question. I was very thankful that Josep also addressed the issue of don't feel that your voice is bad if you have not been um, accepted to an audition because there are so many elements that play a role and we know that young people are often frustrated if they're not selected but I think Giuseppe really gave the right answers to say there's so many things that play a role um, that can be your age your origin your um, um, that there were too many applications in the specific voice or simply that the conductor had a different idea of what voices he wanted and unfortunately we are not always able to ask the conductor to make an exact definition in advance of what type of voices he or she is looking for um, so in the end, it's the conductor or the jury who develop this idea often when they are listening to the voices and looking at the repertoire. So um, um, I think it was a very useful webinar. Thank you, Giuseppe, again. And um, for everybody else, um, please keep following us because there will be more webinars um, in the series of webinars um, in EPIC um, about topics such as how to enter the world of professional choirs or um, um, also some other um, topics of what does it mean for a conductor to work with um, such a choir and um, other interesting um, topics for young people, maybe also how can I present myself well uh, in communication issues, etc. And Sophie will 
keep you up to date um, in our social media and um, also on, in our newsletter that you can subscribe to as you heard. So I wish you a wonderful summer, um, even if it will probably be very different from what you were hoping for originally. And let's hope that we can bring those fantastic youth choirs together again very soon. Thank you very much and goodbye everybody.